What brings about a spiritual crisis? Some people say that we get plenty of warnings before we end up in a crisis. We get the little whisper, and if we don't pay attention, we get a bump upside the head. And if we ignore that, we get a boulder dropped on us and so on. But wouldn't it be nice to catch things when there's still a whisper and not have to go through a full-blown crisis? Well, today we're gonna talk about what to do when life isn't where you want it to be. Or maybe I should say, what to do when your soul is tugging at you, telling you, that life just isn't ideal at that deepest level. How can you discover what you really want at the soul level? This podcast is all about helping you with your spiritual growth so you can overcome obstacles and manifest your destiny to crystallize and materialize any dream, basically to have success on life's journey. It's all about getting unstuck by unlocking your hidden power. I hope today's episode inspires you to look more closely at where you'd like to be as you're on your soul's journey. So let's get started. Hi there and welcome. My name is Raimi, like do Ray me I'm a best-selling author and creator of the Get Unstuck Revolution. I help extraordinary women just like you dissolve the obstacles in your path so you can bring success to you. Now let's get started with today's video. Okay, let me jump off the screen here so I can see my laptop. And today we're talking about spiritual crisis and how to find ways to cooperate with whatever our circumstances are so that we can hopefully move through the crisis and come out the other side a little smarter, a little wiser, and a little bit more of who we were meant to be. When we begin to get those little whispers from our soul telling us that something needs to shift, there's usually an invitation for a little bit of self-discovery in those moments. Every challenge in life and at work is asking us to reach and expand into more of who we really are, and this helps us to take the next steps toward our next success. If you'd like to see success in full abundance along life's journey, and if you're wanting to tap into a greater knowingness and align with the higher consciousness of your infinite self, instead of the lower ego thinking that pushes success away, then this is for you. It's time to be unabashedly unapologetically, happily, untethered to ego thinking, it's time to align with the higher energies of our soul's path instead. This episode is for you if you wonder, what is the difference between spiritual crisis and spiritual growth? How can I use the details of my own personal story to create empowering new questions to help me create a solution to my current challenge? And here's a wild card question for you. Do song lyrics hold the secret to life? Yes, these episodes are about how to find your hidden power when you want to transform challenges into successes. I like to call it the audacity of alchemy. Because when we're feeling stuck, it's never the situation that has us stuck. It's our energy about it that's become stuck in anxiety, overwhelm, doubts, worries, frustration, indecision and even anger. And often this is because of a spiritual injury that we've experienced, some kind of hidden trauma. So it isn't the pain of the situation, it's the pain of not being connected in the natural energy of who we really are, of being connected to that magical part of us that's a creative vibrational being who can use positive energies to create what we want and bring it into physical manifestations. We can allow our manifestations to materialize and not get stuck in the negative vibrations that block them. These positive energies that we talk about so much are where we find the magic of alchemy because our choice of frequency, our choice of those positive thoughts and emotions can change the course of our journey. And so today we're talking about spiritual crisis, or maybe we could even call it spiritual empowerment or spiritual enlightenment. We're talking about how to move through our circumstances using self-discovery. Our circumstances are here to help us with certain life lessons to grow into more of who we're meant to be. So finding ways to cooperate with whatever our circumstances are will hopefully make it a little easier to get through, whether we're going through a full-blown ascension or just tackling one of life's challenges. But how do we do this exactly? Well, Step one is to loosely identify what the current crisis is. 
Now, if you don't have a current crisis going on, you could think of another time when you did and use it as an example. So I'd like you to think about this and then either write down three bullet points about what's going on, or maybe you have three different and separate issues that are all kind of tied together or knotted up together. So just take a minute to do that right now. And we'll look at an example to help this exercise along. I want to show you a comment that someone posted on a recent webinar. And you guys know I always hold your identity anonymous. And so I'm honoring that here as well. And here was the question or comment that was left. This person says, I was targeted a few years ago with a financial crime. It wiped me completely out. The authorities have done nothing. I've been having trouble getting enough funds together to restart my business, or should I start something new? So as we look at this, and I have it here on the screen for you, we can see that it's a bit of a story. And so the first thing we want to do is break this down into bullet points. And what this does is it helps to take the emotion out of it. It takes the story out of the story. Now, one bullet point could be about being the victim of a crime. Another bu bullet point could be about being the victim of authorities who have done nothing. Another point could be about getting new funds. Another could be whether to restart the old business. And the last could be whether to start something new. And so this is how we take the emotion out of the story and out of the circumstance, just break it down to bullet points. But really, when I look at this, I'm interested in how to move forward, not in hanging on to the story. I'm interested in raising my frequency and raising my vibration by looking for the positive possibilities. So if these were my bullet points, I changed them to look like this. How can I create new funds to move forward? Do I want to restart my old business and how can I make it better than ever? Do I want to start something new and create new possibilities for myself? See the difference? Okay. Let's look at another example, also a real world example from a recent webinar. And this person said, now that I'm retired, I feel that I can take a job that I'd really love. I'm not necessarily an ambitious person, I think because my parents didn't expect much from me. They only graduated from high school, whereas I have a master's degree and the only one in the family that does. And if I think back, I've probably gone farther than I thought I would, but I still don't know what my purpose is in this world. And again, as you look at this, you'll see that we're looking at an entire story. And we'd want to split it out into bullet points so that we can kickstart some new possibilities. So if this were my story, I would want to ask these kinds of questions. Is there, if there were a job that I'd really love, what would that look like? What is my unique purpose in this world? And this is something that I'd brainstorm with on for a couple of sheets of paper just to kind of feel it out. What is my unique purpose in this world? Because here in this story, there are really only two questions or two points. So do you see how we can narrow the focus, take the emotion out of it, and just get to the heart of the matter? We're editing the story to get to the actual question. All right. Now let's look at one last example, and then we're going to look at your story. I'd just like you to have some examples to go by so that you can get the most out of your own story when we do that for you here in just a minute. And by the way, just a reminder, I always keep these comments and questions anonymous, not just out of respect for you, but when you participate in one of my webinars and post your questions, your identity is also withheld from me. So unless you send me a direct question by email, I don't know who you are. So here is the last anonymous question. And she says, right now, my life is a mess, emotionally, financially, and health-wise. I'm in a situation which I feel like a rat stuck in a maze. I want to do so much, but I cannot do anything. My health situation, financial situation, and drained out energy does not allow me. I feel totally helpless and hopeless. I really have more than enough reason, which I'm not stating here, to feel this way. All the energy sucked out thanks to the person in my life for 42 years, being married to the absolutely wrong person for the sake of the children, or what someone would say cultural, is the worst thing anyone can do. 
Now, there was a little bit more to this story, but I've abbreviated it just a bit. And as you can see, the story is quite emotional. And believe me, I've been there. And I think we've all been in this place or know someone who has. This is where we can start to see things really begin to tangle up together. And we can get so hung up in the story. And she even mentioned feeling like she was stuck in a maze. I used to say for myself that I feel like, felt like everything was knotted up together. So I get it. And when we get to this point, it can begin to feel impossible to unravel it. So if this were my story, the first thing I do is strip out the emotion and just look at the facts or just the physical evidence that I'd want to change. And so these are the empowering questions that I would create out of my story. How can I create a success out of a mess? How can I recover emotionally, financially, and physically? How can I recover my energy levels? How can I feel empowered and hopeful? How can I begin to turn things around? Now you'll notice here on the screen that the story is completely missing from this slide. And you'll also notice that these are empowering questions that are designed to kickstart the brain to start looking for some answers. Can you see that? All right, now here's the fascinating part. Give me a second to take all the bullet points from these three random stories and put them together on one screen for you. Here we go. Now, if we just glance at these bullet points objectively, we can see that the spiritual crisis within each one of them is actually an opportunity for self-discovery, an opportunity to discover more of who we really are. Because if we focus on self-discovery rather than the story itself, we'll be able to discover a part of ourselves that can see a way out, a part of ourselves that easily sees the solution or the direction. Let me say that again. If we focus on self-discovery, we have an opportunity to discover more of who we really are. We're able to discover that part of us that can see a way out, a part of ourselves that easily sees the solution or the direction. So it begins with transforming our emotionally charged bullet points into questions. And as we know, when we ask a question of our brain, our brain will begin to look for the answers. It's one of the reasons I love brainstorming so much because it literally changes the energy of our situation. So that's step one, to reduce our emotional story into bullet points. And then step two is to transform our bullet points into empowering questions that will allow our brains to go look for the answer. And step three is to use our story, our crisis, as a jumping off point for self-discovery. Because this is what our soul really wants. Our soul or our inner being doesn't want all the emotion and all the chitter chatter. That's ego. Our soul, our inner being doesn't want all the chitter chatter. It wants us to raise our vibration, to raise our emotions to something more positive so that our manifestations can come to fruition. And brainstorming is one of my favorite tools because it's a great way to get these emotions elevated and going into a new, more positive direction. All right, so let's look at some of these self-discovery questions that I promised. Now, even though we all have a story, you might be able to see by now that the story doesn't really matter. The crisis we're in or the crisis we were once in or whatever our current challenge is, doesn't really matter here. It's all part of the illusion asking us to see that we're meant for so much more than the story. Although in pondering some of these questions, you may actually uncover a solution for your story in the coming hours or the coming days in a kind of a subliminal way. But we're really going to focus on the self-discovery part. So if you've already identified what the crisis is or what your current challenge is, that's fine. The important thing right now is the self-discovery. So I'm going to give you some questions to ponder. And my suggestion is to brainstorm at least three or four answers or more as part of your self-discovery. And by the way, if you happen to spot or begin to experience a magnificent epiphany my suggestion is to stop, just stop and let it soak in. Turn off the recording. You can always come back later because sometimes when an epiphany is brewing, there's a lot trying to bubble up to the surface and it wants your undivided attention. It may need the space to bubble up so you can see what it is. So move over to your journal if this happens during any of these self-discovery questions. Sound good? Okay, here we go. 
Number one, if you could change one thing about your life, what would it be and why? And even though we're looking for one thing, go ahead and write down three or four answers or more, as many as you need in order to identify the one thing that you'd like to change about your life. Okay, and here comes number two. What are you most grateful for and why? What do you appreciate the most in your life or in your career right now? And again, write down three or four answers or more. What are you most grateful for and why? And here comes number three. What do you wish you had more of in your life? This could be emotional or it could be a physical object. It could even be something that's inspiring or inspirational. What do you wish you had more of in your life? And here comes number four. If you had any superpower, what would it be and why? This could be x-ray vision or the ability to see through a problem at what the message really is, or the ability to see through the problem to the other side where it's been resolved and see what that solution looks like. Would your superpower be to control time? Would it be teleportation or the ability to go into the future and have a look around, maybe see what destiny holds for you? So what would your superpower be and why? And number five, if today were your last day on earth, how would you spend it? Remember, we're looking for three or four answers here or more. And if this question seems too morbid, you can try this on differently. If you were going to visit another planet in our universe or in any other universe, how would you spend your first day? Would it be exploring? Would you look for adventure? Would you take one of your superpowers with you? Would you find its native people and ask questions? Would you become a videographer? If it were your first day in another universe, how would you spend it? Here comes question number six. If you could invite anyone to dinner to be your guest, and it was your beloved pet, living or not living, it could even be Lassie or an animal character that you've seen in the movies, what would the conversation be? If the animal could talk, what would the conversation be? Or if you'd like a twist on this question, what animal would you be and what would you have to say? And remember, we're looking for three or four answers here or more. And number seven, what could you not live without and why? This could be a personal possession or a personal convenience. It might be an attitude or a level of energy or some insight you've learned along the way, a mantra. It could be a physical attribute like the ability to see or taste or smell or touch. It could be an experience that's become a benchmark that has shown you, well, I got through that so I can get through anything. Maybe you walk in nature every day and this is how you ground and connect. What could you not live without and why? And here's the last one, one of my favorites. Number eight is, what is your favorite song and why? Now, one song may pop into your head, or maybe you'll want to think of three or four. I know I have more than one favorite song. But when you've identified your one favorite song, just see whether it holds a message of how to transform your current crisis or challenge. That one's kind of fun. All right, so those are the self-discovery brainstorming questions that I have for you today. They're designed to open up some new energies and new possibilities for you. So I hope you take a little time to ponder these questions. People tell me that they have some pretty major breakthroughs, usually with just one of the questions. In fact, you know, I had a client one time who was struggling with her finances, and she said her prosperity was stuck and wouldn't budge no matter what. And so I asked her that very first question, remember that one, which was, uh, if you could change one thing about your life, what would it be? And no surprise, she said, well, I would change my prosperity so that it's flowing again, duh, because she said, I've had money and I've not had money. And the one thing I know is that when I have money, the day-to-day -day problems seem to just get handled so much more quickly. And she said, but you know, I think I've stopped my own prosperity because I know that I have to change these things in my life that aren't working. Otherwise, if I did have the money, I'd just ignore these things that are pulling at me and I'd go shoe shopping instead. <laughs> Can you relate? 
Well, this opened up an entire conversation about what exactly she wanted to change in her life and how it was uh, that she had this habit of looking at what's wrong instead of what's right. That's a common one. And she was also obsessively trying to fix things instead of listening to these small whispers that were coming for, from her soul. She was actually wanting to connect with a deeper pool of consciousness, what she called a collective intellect that had inspiration and answers that she simply couldn't see while she was out shoe shopping. And she told me that it was, quite frankly, easier to sit in frustration and complain about everything that was going wrong than to sit still and listen to that inner genius. I can relate. Maybe you can too. So I'm curious, of our eight self-discovery questions, which one or which ones that we talked about today do you already know could open up a breakthrough for you? Was there one question that already felt like a higher frequency question for you, one that you could feel was lifting you up? You know, as we empower ourselves toward this idea of self-discovery and expressing who we are at our core without the negative emotions of ego, we're choosing a higher frequency, higher and better thoughts because our choice of frequency, our choice of more positive emotions and a more positive outlook, well, that changes the course of our journey. So reflecting back on everything we covered today, how can you apply what you've learned? Sometimes we find that life isn't where we want it to be, or maybe I should say that sometimes our soul is tugging at us, telling us that life just isn't where we wanted it to be at the very deepest level. Maybe this is you, or maybe you know someone who's struggling and you'd like to engage some of these questions with them to help them through a tough time. Either way, I hope this helps you as you're using the powers of alchemy to transform challenges and obstacles into positive new successes. This podcast is all about ha helping you to have success on your spiritual growth journey. It's all about getting unstuck by unlocking your hidden power. If you still can't get your head around what's got you stuck, you can tell me about it. You can send me a question to questions at unlockyourhiddenpower.com. Dot com. Or you may not know that you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with your own personal unstuckologist, that's me, by visiting instantbreakthroughsession.com. This private session is designed to help you tap into your greatest resource, that's you, and together we can make quite a team toward calling in the transformational powers of alchemy. And our time together will uncover your single biggest stuck point, you know, the one you can't see. We'll also go over the most genius ways to create clarity so you can just move forward while one obstacle after another is obliterated. And we'll create a strategy to get you moving in a really good direction, the one that's aligned with your life purpose. If this sounds like a match made in heaven, you can hop on over to instantbreakthroughsession.com right now and book the time slot that works best for you. Well, thanks for joining me today, and I'm wishing you a life filled with all the alchemy you need to bring success to you. Feel free to share this video with anyone you know who's feeling stuck, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.